let's talk about UCLA Villanova, which yep. was the game of the weekend, um, the game of the year. The, mm. uh, this felt like a Final Four matchup to you, an Elite Eight matchup. <laughs> what did this feel like to you? The, is this the first first Final Four game or the second Final Four game? You know what's funny? Uh, you know, we joke about that all the time. Like, what does it feel like? You know, what <laughs> what, is, what is the level of this game? And I almost did it. I almost did it myself. You know, I'm watching this game, and it's going down to the wire. And I'm like, man, this this feels like it's going to be the Final this Four game. Like and I'm like, I am, I am who I am laughing at now. I, I've gotten into this, you know, whole thing. But Villanova, even though they're one and two right now, right, they, they looked the part of a Final Four contender. They have the right pieces. But UCLA answered the bell, and I think that was the big question going into the season. You know, we had the NCAA yeah. tournament run, but we never saw them really do it in the regular season before. Can they handle the hype? Can they deliver for, to this crowd that's chomping at the bit? For a, for a team that brought back a lot of guys we all know, and for a There's team that we marks. saw a lot of, yeah, there were an alarming <laughs> amount of question marks about UCLA coming into the season. And uh, I, I wouldn't say that every question was answered by one game against Villanova, mm. but I feel better about it, Tate. Absolutely. I feel better about believing in UCLA because, as a, as a reminder, I was, I was wishy-washy, but then I finally settled in. I'm buying the hype. I'm back in. Uh, I will say, Pauly Pavilion, it, it, it didn't sound that loud because I think ESPN just turned down their microphones a lot. They turned, yeah. They've like messed with the mixing where the, the rims are louder, aren't they? They have like microphones hear, on yeah, the rims. Yeah. Oh my god, they, they've done that with the uh, uprights on football. Those uh -huh. doinks, like I, I think the Bears, the double doink, like really changed. More doinks. Yeah, we need more doinks. America loves doinks. <laughs> I think they're doing that to the rims now too. Um, and then they turned down the crowd noise. But Paulie looked like it was it was rocking. Paulie looked legitimately like it was rocking, which is hilarious because it looks like there's nobody there for a Long Beach. Day well, game. you know what I mean. You pick it. You pick your battles, and I think Jay Billis. I mean, he kind of captured the moment. He said this was the loudest he's ever seen yeah. Pauly Pavilion, a guy that, you know, we've been around Pauly a lot. But he's Jay from Bill Southern California, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. He, 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 knows. Kno he knows the drill. And the uh -huh. fact that he was reacting that way and saying this was a moment for UCLA basketball. And I was on the East Coast. I was watching mm -hmm. this game at 1130 at a bar, and I told you this. I mean, you know, not that many people you would think, you know, care about UCLA basketball. But by halftime, Johnny hits that shot going into halftime. Mm -hmm. You know, the casual fans in the bar, they're, they're perked up. Second half, Johnny gets hot. Everyone's invested. Everyone's watching this game. And I'm thinking to myself, UCLA can capture the people this year. You know what I mean? We in UCLA's college, America's they're team? America, they might be America's wow. team, you know, because they're flashy. And Hame and Johnny are, might be the best duo we've seen in, in, a, in a long time, maybe since the trio of Virginia guys, you know, as far as likability. And they have yeah. four primary ball handlers, Jules Bernard, Tiger Campbell, and then Hame and, J and Johnny. Yeah. I mean, that, who else has that? And then you got Cody Riley coming back. You got two real bigs. You got Clark coming off the bench, yeah. a defensive weapon. You got our five-star Peyton Watson. I like what I see, dude. They they are very. I will give you this. Uh, I don't know how likable the red. I I certainly love. It. I think I they're. Love, I think I they're likable. I, I love all. This those was guys. the test. Yeah. This was a litmus test. Um, they're certainly very likable to me. I don't know if the red the rest of it. I I don't know if I wouldn't go so far as to say they're America's team yet. They're climbing, especially the when you're the you're in Los Angeles. And they're somehow you still have more the underdogs. Titles. I know that's what's so weird. How do that's they why I love themselves? it. They're the number two team in the country, but it feels they've like... won eleven national titles. <laughs> they're in the second largest city in this country, <laughs> but they're underdogs. <laughs> they're underdogs. I love it. Like man, we're really rooting for those guys. Um, I give credit to Hame. Triple I, 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 I will give you this. UCLA is definitely uh, in this young season so far, and what little <laughs> games I've seen so far. Um, they feel like they're going to be the most fun team this year. Yes. Win, or, win lose, otherwise. If, yes. if you're looking for a team to just, like, they're on television, I just need a college basketball game to watch, which team should I watch? It's UCLA, is it not? Mm -hmm. That's the team. Absolutely. I mean, Gonzaga is probably – they play next week, one versus two next week. Um, I think Gonzaga is going to win. I think Gonzaga is a better team. We're going to talk about Gonzaga in a little bit. Uh, but I think UCLA is more fun. I think yeah. UCLA is more likable because UCLA play – like, the style of basketball they're playing – they, they, it's like an in, like the way they attack Villanova. It, it was so fast. Well, the thing that was fascinating to me was Villanova looks to pass. UCLA was looking to score yes. at all times. So Villanova plays a beautiful brand of basketball, mm -hmm. and they're trying to find open guys, and, and they penetrate, they back people down, and, yeah. and dribble drive, you know, dribble drive, offense, back cuts, yeah, all that. So fun to watch. Yep. UCLA does kind of the opposite, where they're like, let's figure out the matchup, and yeah. then just go, and attack and just go, the and attack the matchup, go, and it's very NBA oriented. And I usually hate 
NBA everything mm -hmm. that every every NBA influence on college basketball I usually hate. Um, but there's something fun about it because like Juzang, Juzang's a great example. This guy, the, 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 the Marquette fans, turn the podcast off. We already talked about your team. You don't want to hear me talk about this because I'm going to contradict myself about Marcus Howard. Juzang being a gunner is just so fun, dude. Like he yeah. was one for what, nine? Yeah, to, eight, start, the to game. start the game. And you could see and, it. And then he, but we all knew it was going to come. Like, you know, like we were all waiting for Johnny to get hot, you know, and that's kind of he the He doesn't fun stop part. shooting. Yeah, exactly. And he'll shoot with his heels on the three-point line. Mm -hmm. He'll shoot coming off. He'll, he'll jump into guys and throw floaters. Like he just, he, he knows... It, he 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 falls into the gambler's fallacy that Brad Underwood fell into, where everything if if things go wrong enough, eventially they're gonna go right. Yes. And that's what Brad Underwood thought tonight too. He's like, we have screwed up thirty possessions <laughs> it has in a row. To work this time. It's gonna work this time. Yeah, that's how Johnny approaches basketball. He's like, I missed I've missed the last eight shots, which means this one's definitely going in. And there's there's a fine line between that. I get like that's what makes UCLA interesting and so fun to watch is because I think there are gonna be games they're gonna lose this year that they have no business losing, because there's a fine line tape between like finding the matchup and exploiting it and saying like, Hame, you got the worst defender on you. Now you go, 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 yeah. take him, take him, take him. And that's kind of how they were playing against Villanova. Uh, there's a fine line between that and my turn basketball, which mm -hmm. is just like guys are like, you shot the last four, give it to me. I know it's my turn to go. Um, and I feel like they're, they're, they're still a candidate to yeah. dip into the, those waters. The one and I'm a little thing, worried about the that. The one thing whatever. that I think that they have to make sure that they don't fall into the trap of, which is letting Johnny Juzang breathe, be the primary ball handler that brings the ball up. Yeah. That is not who Johnny is. And I know that's what every NBA yeah. scout, and that's probably what people are telling him. He needs to, you know, yeah. bring that aspect of his game. And, and But Hame and Tiger Campbell are the two guys that have to be the primary ball handlers. And Hame, you mentioned the NBA game. Here's a comp for you. Jaime reminds me of Jimmy Butler, specifically Jimmy mm. Butler in the bubble. You know what I mean? Mm. With the way that he can get into the mid range and the mid post, mm. and that is where he can thrive. And then he kind of controls the tempo. You know what I mean? I love the way that he plays basketball. And Johnny, he can be the steady, the steady kind of like get everyone in the set, set things up, and then Johnny can get hot in his own time. You know, Johnny's what I mean? Kobe. Johnny like he really thinks have the he's Kobe. You know what I mean? He doesn't have the pressure of like getting everything set up tiger can do that hame can do that jules yeah. bernard can do yeah. that yeah and i think that's what's so fascinating about this team because it lets johnny be johnny yeah. and that's what america wants to see that's what i want to see be johnny. let johnny be johnny <laughs> that's what we want Hawk is so good dude. he's so good he's so tiger campbell played really well too he's, that's another guy that like he's got the confidence finally. i think his name and his hair and he was a five star and he came yeah. to ucla like Iowa all kid. of that made me not necessarily cheer against him but i was like all right let me see like all right let, let's see what yeah. you got here and uh i wouldn't say he's been a disappointment in his career not even close to that but it was like i remember when he first started at ucla it was like uh this i don't know i mean like he's not that it's yeah, not, it's not like I, I wish I could talk myself into be being more excited and he had about injuries him. early on. Yeah, he just kind of was like, floundering right. a little bit. And I, yeah. You kind of want to put him off to the side, and he reminded me against Villanova that he's very good. and He's mm -hmm. going to be awesome for this team this year. He's the third guy, maybe. Yeah, maybe and when we guy. get to the tournament, you have to have that point guard who can set everything up. And yeah. Tiger is probably, if not the best, you, he's in the conversation of one of the best of like pure point guard yeah. here's how we have to get everything set up and here's how we have to run things in a, in a half court situation hey there thanks for watching titus and tate for the full friend of the program experience subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball the action is heating up come join titus and tate